This video is sponsored by NVIDIA AI. China has made history by becoming the first country to collect and return soil samples from the far side of the moon. On June 25th, the Chang'e 6 mission's return capsule re-entered Earth's atmosphere and safely landed in the grasslands of Inner Mongolia. This marked the successful end of a 53-day mission, bringing back the first-ever lunar far-side samples. Initial observations of the 2 kilograms of lunar soil show that it is thicker and stickier than samples previously collected from the near side of the moon. These samples will now be distributed across China and the world for detailed research and analysis. This mission is part of China's ambitious lunar exploration program. Chang'e 6 was their sixth lunar mission in the past 20 years and the second sample return mission in just four years. China now has soil samples from both the near and far sides of the moon, raising several intriguing questions. What secrets does the mysterious far side of the moon hold? And why has it fascinated scientists for generations? Why are countries around the world suddenly racing back to the moon? Finally, and most importantly, what does China aim to build on the moon with its Chunga series of missions? The far side of the moon is the half that always faces away from Earth. This happens because the moon rotates on its axis at the same rate it orbits Earth. As a result, we only ever see one side of the moon from our vantage point on Earth. The far side, therefore, remains hidden from our view. A common misconception is that the far side is always dark. However, both sides of the moon receive sunlight equally as the moon rotates. The term dark side of the moon is a misnomer because it suggests perpetual darkness, which is not the case. The far side experiences day and night cycles, just like the near side. It's just that we can't see it from Earth. For a long time, we thought the far side of the moon must look more or less the same as its near side. But we were wrong. When the Soviet spacecraft Luna 3 sent back the first images of the far side in 1959, scientists were surprised to see a landscape vastly different from the familiar face of the moon we see from Earth. Unlike the near side, which has large, smooth plains called Maria, the far side was covered with craters and rugged terrain. This discovery challenged our understanding of the moon's geology and history. The far side's heavily cratered surface is due to its thicker crust, which has made it less susceptible to volcanic activity. On the near side, volcanic lava flowed more easily, filling in craters and creating the dark, flat maria. On the far side, the thicker crust stopped this lava from spreading, leaving the surface with many craters from impacts over billions of years. Even though the far side remains hidden from our view, there are several reasons why nations are so interested in exploring it. The first is radio astronomy. The far side is so remote, so shielded from the noise of our bustling Earth, that it provides an unparalleled window into the cosmos. Here, in the quiet darkness, lies the key to unlocking some of the universe's most profound secrets. A radio telescope unlike any other. Shielded by the moon's massive body, this region is free from Earth's radio chatter noise. Our planet's constant stream of communication signals and atmospheric interference can never reach this place. It is the most silent place in our cosmic neighborhood. There is a NASA proposal to create an ultra-long wavelength radio telescope in a crater on the far side. It can detect wavelengths greater than 10 meters, corresponding to frequencies less than 30 megahertz. Such a telescope can achieve something that even the $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope can't. Measurements from the Dark Ages of the Universe The Dark Ages refer to a period that lasted a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, but before the first stars blinked into existence. During this time, the universe was filled with a thick, dark fog of neutral hydrogen gas. This era lasted until the first stars and galaxies formed, illuminating the universe and ending the Dark Ages. A radio telescope on the far side of the moon can measure faint radio waves from the Dark Ages, searching for what scientists call the Dark Ages signal. 
Another reason why countries like the US and China are keen to explore the far side of the moon is the potential for establishing a permanent lunar base. This idea might seem far-fetched, but it could revolutionize space travel, much like how InVideo has transformed video making. InVideo AI is the world's most used AI video creator, with over 10 million users across 150 plus countries. It's the only AI video creator out of the 20 plus tools that I've tried that puts you in the driver's seat and works as your personal sidekick. All you have to do is start with a simple text prompt and it will create the first rough draft for you. Imagine standing at its base looking up. You'd need some really good binoculars. You can regenerate or give further commands to make specific changes. Want to add subtitles? Done. Want to translate your video into French? Done. And the best part is that you can clone your voice and make it narrate the video in your voice in any language. This gives so much creative space for any project. While you can try it for free, the paid plan at $20 a month unlocks more features like voice cloning and high quality stock footage. You can use the link and my code, also given in the description, to double the video credits in your first month. Many see AI as a threat to jobs but I view tools like InVideo AI as opportunities to enhance skills and realize projects that were previously out of reach. Now back to the second reason, building a lunar base. There are two advantages for space exploring nations to establish a permanent base on the moon. First, the moon's gravity is much weaker than Earth's. This makes it easier and cheaper to launch rockets from the moon into deep space. From this lunar base, we could send missions to Mars and other planets more easily, opening up the solar system for exploration. Additionally, hidden in the dark craters of the moon are deposits of water ice. This ice is incredibly valuable because it can be used for drinking water, oxygen, and even rocket fuel. A base on the far side of the moon could tap into these resources, making long-term living and working there possible. The Apollo 8 astronauts were the first humans to see the far side in person when they orbited the moon in 1968. Over the years, all crewed and uncrewed soft landings occurred on the near side. But on January 3, 2019, Chang'e 4 became the first mission to land on the far side. Today, thanks to the Chang'e 6 mission, we have humanity's first lunar samples from this unexplored side. China is quite serious about its mission to establish its presence on the moon, which reflects in the Chang'e mission plan and the pace at which it is proceeding. The program is divided into four main phases, orbiting, landing, sample return, and international cooperation. The first phase of the program focused on orbiting the moon and began with the Chang'e 1 mission. Launched on October 24, 2007, the primary goals were to orbit the moon map its surface, and study its composition. Chang'e 1 successfully provided high-resolution images and conducted various scientific experiments before deliberately crashing into the moon at the end of its mission. Following this success, Chang'e 2 was launched on October 1, 2010. This mission aimed to build on Chang'e 1's achievements by achieving a closer lunar orbit for better imaging and mapping the lunar surface in even higher resolution. After its primary mission, Chang'e 2 traveled to the L2 Lagrangian point to conduct additional experiments and even flew by an asteroid in 2012, showcasing China's growing capabilities in space exploration. After successfully orbiting the moon, China moved to the next phase, landing and roving. This phase began with the Chang'e 3 mission, launched in December 2013. Using topographic data from its predecessor orbiters, the mission team selected a landing site in the Mare Imbrium region, one of the largest craters in the solar system. Upon landing, Chang'e 3 deployed the U-2 rover to explore the lunar surface and conduct scientific experiments. The lander, equipped with seven scientific instruments and cameras, continued operating for a significant time, conducting astronomical observations with its onboard ultraviolet instruments. Building on this success, Chunga 4 was launched on December 7, 2018, with the ambitious goal of landing on the far side of the moon, a feat never before accomplished. On January 3, 2019, Chunga 4 successfully landed in the South Pole Aitken Basin 
and deploy the U-22 rover, marking another milestone in lunar exploration. The communication with the lander on the far side was made possible through a relay satellite placed at the L2 Lagrange point of the Earth-Moon system. After the continuous success of the first and second phases, it was time for the third phase of the mission, which was focused on collecting samples and bringing them back to Earth for a detailed analysis. This phase began with the launch of Chunga 5 on November 23, 2020. The mission aimed to land on the Moon, collect samples, and return them to Earth. Chunga 5 landed on the near side of the Moon, collected 1.7 kilograms of lunar samples, and returned them to Earth on December 17, 2020. This marked the first successful lunar sample return mission since the 1970s. The samples collected by Chunga 5 have provided valuable insights into the Moon's geology, including the age and composition of its surface. Representing the sixth mission in China's quest to explore the Moon, the Chunga 6 mission was launched on May 3, 2024 by a Long March 5 rocket. This marked China's second visit to the lunar far side. It also featured international collaboration, carrying scientific instruments from France, Sweden, Italy, and Pakistan. While on the moon, the Chunga 6 lander worked for 49 hours, collecting approximately 2 kilograms of lunar material using a scoop and a drill that reached up to 2 meters below the surface. The samples were then loaded into an ascent vehicle, which later docked with the service module in lunar orbit. The return capsule made its dramatic descent through the Earth's atmosphere on June 25th, landing in the grasslands of Inner Mongolia. This event marked a successful end of the 53-day-long Chunga 6 mission and successfully delivered the first-ever samples from the far side of the Moon to Earth. As far as the preliminary analysis goes, the sample from the Moon's far side appears stranger than expected. It is thicker and stickier than the sample collected from the Moon's near side in 2020 and contains some lumps, indicating a non-uniform consistency. For further analysis, the first group of samples will be available to domestic researchers by the end of 2024, with international scientists expected to gain access shortly thereafter. While Chunga 6 has showcased China's growing capabilities in space exploration, it is just a glimpse of the nation's broader ambitions for our solar system. The sample collection on the Moon serves as a practice run for a potential mission to collect samples from Mars. While lunar samples can reveal many secrets about the solar system, Material from Mars might help us understand the origins of life and whether Mars could support life. Currently, NASA and the European Space Agency are also working on a mission to return Mars samples. However, this project has faced delays, budget problems, and political hurdles. This situation gives China a good chance to achieve this major space milestone first. Last year, China announced plans to launch its first crewed lunar mission before 2030. This mission aims to land two astronauts on the Moon for a few hours before they rejoin a colleague waiting in orbit. However, China's plans go beyond just a brief visit to the Moon. They aim for a long-term presence akin to NASA's Artemis program, which aims to send the first astronauts to the lunar South Pole by 2026. Creating a lunar base involves many challenges. The Moon's harsh environment includes extreme temperatures and radiation due to the lack of an atmosphere. This highlights the need to develop efficient life support systems and provide a steady energy supply, especially during the 14-day lunar night. Using local resources, like extracting water from lunar ice and building structures with lunar soil, is an idea on the table. But it is technologically demanding. Reliable communication especially with the Moon's far side, also requires advanced relay satellites. To address these challenges, China plans to launch Chunga 7 in 2026, which will conduct a detailed survey of the lunar South Pole. This mission will focus on searching for water ice, studying lunar geology, and exploring the potential for in-situ resource usage. Following this, Chunga 8 will be launched in 2028 to test technologies necessary for building a lunar base and conduct further scientific research. All of this will be part of the International Lunar Research Station program in collaboration with Russia and other international partners. The ILRS aims to support a long-term human and robotic presence on the Moon. 
specifically targeting the South Pole region. Although the ILRS project runs parallel in objectives to NASA's Artemis program, the two programs are independent. This clearly shows how geopolitical divisions on Earth can also be reflected in space. It will be interesting to see how this space race unfolds in the next few years, especially now that we are on the brink of understanding what lies on the far side of the moon with the new sample return. So thanks for watching and be sure to check out the link in the description to explore the magic of NVIDIA AI.